welcome to Successful Philanthropy. I'm your host, Jean Shafiroff. This show is designed to highlight the work of philanthropic leaders here in the United States and then beyond. And with us today is Victoria Flamont. She is the Executive Director of Surgeons of Hope. Victoria, welcome and thank you so much for being here. And can you tell our audience a little bit about the work of Surgeons of Hope? Sure, well thank you so much, Jean, for having me here today. It's a pleasure to be here with you. And a little bit about Surgeons of Hope. We are a nonprofit organization based in New York City. We're affiliated with the United Nations and we work in Latin America to help children who have heart disease. And specifically, congenital heart disease, correct? That is correct. Congenital heart disease and acquired heart disease, which is caused by rheumatic fever. Interesting and, and very, very sad. And can you tell me and our audience how many children across the world are born with congenital heart disease each year? Yes. Well, each year, over a million children are born with heart disease around the world, and up to three million more acquire rheumatic heart disease, unfortunately, because of rheumatic fever. That's all very tragic and very, very sad. Now, um, you started the work, um, or Surgeons of Hope started the work in, uh, in about 20 years ago, and you started primarily in Nicaragua, is that correct? And I'm assuming you chose Nicaragua because it is one of the poorest countries in the Western Hemisphere and there wasn't the, the facilities there to work with the children. And can you tell our viewers a little bit more about why Nicaragua? Sure. <laughs> well, you are correct. Um, Nicaragua is one of the poorest countries in the Western Hemisphere. And when Surgeons of Hope started working there in 2008, there was no specific pediatric heart program, which meant that there were international medical groups coming into the country and helping to operate on cases, but there was not a local team that had the knowledge or the capabilities of doing um, even a simple surgery, such as uh, fixing a hole in the heart. And that's you know, the most basic heart defect. Um, it's something, it's actually the leading defect in newborns, congenital heart disease. So you can have a hole in the heart. Um, sometimes the, the defect is more complicated. But in the case of Nicaragua, there wasn't a local team that could help the children there on a routine and sustainable basis. And so when Surgeons of Hope got involved in 2008, our goal was to build a local team, get surgeons trained, and then we also uh, helped to build a heart center and equip it. And did that happen? Were you able to build a local team that could actually do surgery on the children? Or did you have to bring in the surgeons from the United States and elsewhere? Yes. Well, in the beginning, we were um, bringing in a lot of teams. So surgeons, cardiologists, anesthesiologists, and nurses. Um, there was a team of 12 to 15 that was traveling either from the US or from Europe, um, from leading pediatric cardiac programs, uh, oftentimes from teaching hospitals. And the goal was always to transfer knowledge and uh, build local skills. And so over the years, we're, we're really happy and delighted that the local team now is able to do many of these surgeries on their own. And they're able to do it in a beautiful, state-of-the-art heart center, um, which was built and inaugurated in 2013. Yes, and I've actually been there. And for the viewers, I wanted to talk a little bit about my trip to Nicaragua, actually I, I was there twice in 2016, not with Surgeons of Hope, but on a privately funded trip for Global Strays, a charity founded by my youngest daughter, with, which helps with animal rescue groups in Central America. But while I was on that trip in June 2016, I decided to go see the work of Surgeons of Hope because I had gotten involved initially in Surgeons of Hope in 2014 as an honoree of their event here in New York. And I was very curious to see the work. And I think when you get involved with a charity, it's always a good idea if you can go and see the work to do it. So uh, very briefly, I went to this center at La Mascada, which is the children's hospital in Nicaragua. And I saw, I didn't see any surgeries happening, but I walked around with the different doctors I saw the patients in the hospital, and literally I was just so impressed with everything going on. And it was also very sad to see all these young children uh, who were in the hospital 
there to have surgery. And Victoria, I'm assuming you've been to Nicaragua, uh, to La, La Mascada, and um, you must have similar uh, stories and, and feelings about what's going on down there. Yes, um, as you said, it is, it is very sad to see there are so many uh, sick children and children in need, but I think it's also so inspiring when you get to meet some of the patients that have been helped by Surgeons of Hope. So I was down there last August and met a little girl named Louisiana, and um, she had a heart defect, and when she was about, you know, I'd say six months old, her mother noticed that she was blue and it was very hard for her to breathe, and she desperately wanted for her daughter to, to get better and to be cured, and was able to, her daughter was able to receive surgery uh, during one of Surgeons of Hope's missions, and I got to meet her a week before her eighth birthday. So it's just so wonderful to see a child who was at the risk of losing her life, is now running around, she's going to school, and her dream is actually to become a veterinarian to help animals. And she's now eight, and she had the yes. surgery when she was how old? When she was two. So you've been following her, and I think that's yes. so important to see how these uh, children end up doing and faring later on in life. And for our viewers, how do you find the doctors? I understand a lot come from a Columbia Presbyterian, but what kind of doctor must be a very, very special person uh, willing to give up his vacation or her vacation to go on a mission with a group like Surgeons of Hope and work with the children and the families because it's a package. Mm -hmm. And uh, But uh, they're really saving lives and they're doing this, I understand, on their free time. And, how do you find the doctors? Well, that's correct. We are incredibly thankful to all of the doctors and the nurses and the medical teams who volunteer with Surgeons of Hope to perform these life-saving surgeries and also to teach and share their knowledge um, cost-free. So they have a huge heart, and for that we are so thankful to them. And we find them through our network. So our president, Dr. Eduardo de Cruz, is a leading pediatric cardiologist. He is also an expert in critical care. He's a professor at the University of Colorado. So he has quite a wide network. And um, to be honest, it's a small community of, of surgeons, of pediatric cardiac surgeons, and they all want to help because they know that in developing countries, over 90% of children don't have access to care, either because they can't afford it or because it doesn't exist. And so they really take it upon themselves. Um, they take their vacation, time away from their families to help these families and these children. Well, it's really a beautiful, a beautiful thing. And I understand besides Nicaragua, you're now working in other Central American countries and I think Costa Rica, yes. and then Paraguay. And can you just talk a little bit about the work in those countries? Sure. So Surgeons of Hope um, expanded to Costa Rica in 2014. Dr. Eduardo de Cruz was actually requested to come help there at the Public Children's Hospital in San Jose. And uh, with Dr. de Cruz's leadership, he was able to work with the hospital directors, the directors of the pediatric cardiac program, to restructure the program, and also they actually jointly implemented a um, oximetry program nationally, which means that when a child is born, the level of oxygen in the blood is measured to ensure that there is no possible heart defect. And that's actually something that we would like to bring to both Nicaragua and Paraguay, because what we see is that it's very important to catch heart disease early on. If we're able to catch it within the first few days of life, it means that we're able to address and correct whatever the defect may be. And what kind of budget do you operate on annually? I understand from what I've learned, it's a very, very small budget for all that you do. But can you explain the budget to our viewers? Sure. <laughs> well. <laughs> So I would say in terms of um, monetary, uh, it's about half a million dollars a year, but that does not account for all of the time that the doctors and the nurses are contributing. Uh, we have a very generous corporate sponsor, Publicis Group, one of the top advertising agencies in the world. They also provide office space for us. They give us an annual grant. So we have a lot of support that I don't think can be counted in monetary terms. Um, because it's in-kind donations, but as you so well know, Jean, 
philanthropy just isn't about giving money. It's about giving your time, your resources, your knowledge. And that's really something that we're so blessed with at Surgeons of Hope. Yes, and we are now talking with Victoria Flamont. She is the CEO of Surgeons of Hope, a charity that goes and works in Central American countries. And what do they do? They do congenital heart surgeries on children, enabling these children to continue living on. And excuse me, but um, so you have now uh, Diego Luna, uh, the famous Mexican actor who is your uh, spokesperson. And I know last year at the gala, he was the honoree. And, and I watch him on your videos and on your website. And Diego, I remember when I met him, Diego has an absolute heart of gold. And yes, he does. why has he taken this on? I guess it's an important priority to him. But is there a personal connection or, or he's just trying to be helpful? Honestly, I think it's because he has two children himself. Um, they actually both had COVID and luckily have recovered and you know all is well. But his experience as a father and knowing that some people have a child and then are at risk of losing their child um, is something that is unfathomable. And he really wants to address and make sure that no parent has to go through that. Well, when you're a parent and I'm a parent, I think the health of your children is most important. And if you've been fortunate enough as a parent to have healthy children, well, you want the same for others. And I think this is one reason that people get involved, besides the doctors, but the supporters, they want to see that other people's children and people who live in underserved countries have a fair chance. And I think it's just wonderful that Surgeons of Hope is reaching out to people in uh, Central American countries. And I understand you also want to start working in uh, South America. Is that correct? Yes. Well, Paraguay is in South America. Right. So but more in South America. Yes. Well, in 2019, we expanded to Paraguay. And um, we were looking, I was looking forward to going with you earlier this year, which we were supposed to go in March of 2020, yes, due and to then COVID. Yep. Um, but so we are working in Paraguay, and what we'd like to do um, in Central America is actually create a regional network because some of the smaller countries um, still are struggling to have sustainable pediatric uh, care programs that are locally funded and locally supported, and so. Um, our our long-term goal is to create a regional hub where some of the smaller countries can send their patients um, to one of our program sites, either in Nicaragua or Costa Rica. That is really our dream because we want to ensure that all children can access the care they need no matter where they're born. Well, I'm sure that's going to happen. And of course, with the COVID-19 pandemic, all of us have been affected in a, in a, in a very negative way. And it's so nice and so important to see that groups like Surgeons of Herb continue to do their work. And although you can't send doctors, they can't send doctors on missions to the countries that they want to, uh, they have trained uh, personnel and, and medical staff to continue with their work. And so that's correct. What exactly are you doing during the pandemic to continue? I, I spoke a little bit about it, but can you tell our audience a little bit more? Yes. So one of the initiatives that we're doing is we're supporting the centers with the most recent um, lessons learned from COVID, how to diagnose and treat children who may have been exposed to COVID. Uh, there's also the multi-system inflammatory syndrome that has been appearing in children. We actually um, hosted a webinar on that. Uh, some of our partners hosted a webinar and we had all of the program sites join in. And the next day they had a case in Nicaragua. So it goes to show that you know, even though we can't currently travel, we can still support our partners. We can help them with relevant information. And um, Dr. DeCruz is constantly on a weekly basis checking in uh, with the program sites and helping them diagnose some of the more complicated cases. And with surgeons as well, we're able to 
um, explain remotely the, the procedures. And we're hoping that we can at least get one or two surgeons to go down on their own. So we won't be able to bring the team of 12 to 15 medical professionals, but we'll have a surgeon who will be able to um, continue to help training and oversee some of these more complicated surgeries. And when do you think that might take place? This year or maybe in uh, 2021? We are hoping um, that within the next few months we can get a surgeon um, down to at least one of our program sites. And then hopefully next year we can resume some of our larger missions. Well, it's all very exciting and very, very important. Now, you have an event coming up November 12th, and I know it's virtual. Yes. I'm involved <laughs> as uh, the chair of the gala, but can you explain to our audience what it's like and, and what you're going to do exactly with this virtual event? And will you, will you connect with the people in these countries through this event? And mm -hmm. do you think you'll be reaching more donors, newer donors, and hopefully you'll raise a lot of money for the work, correct? That is our goal and that's what we hope. Um, this is gonna be a really fun celebration of our patients, their families, all of the medical teams, both locally and the volunteers who are involved with the organization, and of course our kind donors such as yourself and so many wonderful people who are already supporting Surgeons of Hope. We really want to celebrate the spirit of generosity, resilience. We are going to have a fantastic host, uh, Jacqueline Towers Perkins. She's worked with Jay-Z and Beyonce. She's worked with the royal family in the UK. So she's really going to bring a fun and energetic spirit to the night as we celebrate those who are in our community, as we honor all of the frontline workers who have worked so hard during the pandemic. There will be some very inspiring stories and we are hoping a special appearance by our uh, heart ambassador, Diego Luna. Virtually. Virtually. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I have a feeling he'll show up because he's so devoted to Surgeons of Hope and such a special man. And he has a heart of gold for sure, as all of you do. And I think when you hear of a, a charity like Surgeons of Hope and you, you learn more about the work, and here we have these heart surgeons who are working 24-7 in the United States and other countries, but they take the time to give of their own vacation time to work on these children, to keep these children alive in countries where they don't have these services available. It's really extraordinary. And this is what brought me to Surgeons of Hope, to see the work you do. And when you see what happens, you, it's not a question of, um, do I think I want to get involved? It's that you have to get involved because the work is so important. And, and, and then the families, the gratitude, the incredible work that you're doing, I just love it. And um, there's a little story that I always love someone to talk about and how the center in Managua, Nicaragua, at La, Scotta, La Manascotta was actually created. I understand that the Spanish government got involved and they gave a $5 million loan uh, to Nicaragua and that loan was later excused. Can you talk a little bit about that? It's just such a beautiful, heartwarming story. Oh, sure. And I think this is really where you know, the spirit of global collaboration and cooperation comes in, something that is very much needed today and something that was so critical in building this heart center. Um, it was actually a debt forgiveness program and there were a, num a number of projects being considered and this health project to build a heart center was the one that won. So it was a collaboration between the government of Nicaragua, the government of Spain who wrote off the debt, Surgeons of Hope who provided the expertise on how to build the heart center, the flow of the center, where the operating room should be located, where the um, critical care unit should be located. And we also played a very large role in equipping um, this facility with a lot of the equipment and the medical supplies that were needed. Um, and the government of Taiwan as well also gave a um, $500,000 grant in order to help purchase equipment. So it's a really great example of how people can come together, governments can come together um, to do something so important for children. Yes, and so Surgeons of Hope is a perfect example how individuals, uh, donors, 
doctors and then governments and businesses all come together with the objective of helping humanity. And I can't think of anything more important. And this is what philanthropy is all about. And for all of our viewers, I want to say that philanthropy is the love of mankind and of everything living on this earth. And if you don't have the financial resource to, to write out a big check, you can always give your time and your knowledge. Never underestimate the value of what you can give because it's very, very important. And you can change lives and you can save lives. And Victoria, What's next for you? You're getting ready, I think, in the next year after the gala. You'll go on more missions. You'll reach out to more people. Can you talk a little bit about what motivated you to get involved with Surgeons of Hope? Because you're a young, beautiful woman, Thank very you. intelligent, and I see how hard you work, and I see anyone who works for a charity, you have to be devoted because it's tough work. So. What motivates you? Honestly, it's um, being able to change the lives of these children and their families. I truly believe that talent is universal and opportunity is not. And so the fact that we're able to help these children, you know, go on to live a better life, uh, be able to attend school. I met a, a little boy, an eight-year-old boy, uh, last when I was in Nicaragua last year. And he had never been to school because his mother was worried about his heart condition. So, you know, heartbreaking. knowing- Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking, but now he's in school and his mom actually sends me pictures through WhatsApp. And his name is Yamil, so I ask her, how's Yamil, is he going to school? And she says, yes, he loves it. And so the fact that this little boy who, you know, didn't know how to write his name, couldn't read anything, is now in school and has the opportunity, you know, maybe to have a small business one day or to go work, uh, you know, somewhere, that's really exciting and that's what motivates me, knowing that these children have a chance at life and they can, they can have a, a bright future. I think it's just wonderful and I hope you stay with this for a long, long time. Thanks. And uh, for our viewers who want to get involved, is there any way, say, uh, well, I'm not a heart surgeon, and I, but I'd like to volunteer my time. Maybe I'm, I'm not able to write a big check, but is there a way that I could volunteer and help out maybe in the office or what could I do? Of course. <laughs> well, we always welcome volunteers because of course the, the surgeons and the cardiologists who volunteer are very important, but so are the volunteers who help the organization. And there are many opportunities. Uh, we're always looking for, for support in our communications and our marketing bringing in um, new donors, new supporters. It's always very important. And so any kind of skill somebody has and they'd like to put to good use and they'd like to contribute to Surgeons of Hope, we always welcome them. And, and yeah, we, you know, we'd be very happy to bring on new volunteers. And what is the website for volunteers to reach out They to? can go to surgeonsofhope.org. Um, and then they can also send uh, an email to info at surgeonsofhope.org and express their interest in volunteering. And they can describe what they think they can offer and maybe do. Exactly. And then for those who maybe want to get involved with the virtual gala, is there a fee or is it free? So it is free for anyone who would like to, to join the, the party, the celebration, and. Uh, join us online. Uh, we'll have a silent and live auction. So those are ways in which people can contribute. And we'll also have um, some different ticket options. We're still working out the specific details. But again, if you go to surgeonsofhope.org, uh, all of the information will be there very shortly. And we're looking at doing a gall in a box option, maybe some dinner options for people who are mm -hmm. in New York City. So it'll be a really fun night. Well, I'm so looking forward to it. And for others that want to maybe go and see your work, will there be possibilities next year uh, for a mission? Or do you think you're going to have to wait until maybe the end of uh, 2021? And uh, what, what is the outlook? We're hopeful. We're hopeful that you know, maybe next summer we'll be able to um, resume our missions. We will, you know, hopefully get a surgeon or two deployed uh, before then. 
I'd also like to speak a little bit about our COVID relief response, if I can, um, because we, we didn't yes. get to speak about that. But some, some ways in which we've been helping the community as well and the hospitals we support is um, through food and hygiene uh, packages. So we've donated supplies to hundreds of families uh, in, in Nicaragua, in Nicaragua, and Costa Rica, and Paraguay as well. Wonderful. Um, because of COVID, many people lost their jobs, and that was really of concern everywhere. to us. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. But especially in Latin America, because 50% of the economy works in the informal sector. So when the governments started putting restrictions on movement um, and people had to stay home, we were very feel fearful for our patients. Um, and in Costa Rica, we had a number of patients waiting for surgery. So we wanted to make sure that they could stay healthy and they had nutritious food. Um, so we were able to partner with some great organizations on the ground who were able to get the food uh, right to our patients and to our families. And if people still want to donate to the COVID-19 um, program that you have, is that available yes. or is it over? <laughs> no, we, we are continuing. We're also helping yeah. our program sites um, with critical medication, with um, supplies, any kind of supplies that the hospital needs. They send us a list and then, um, you know, we work with them to, to get the the medication and supplies down there. We actually had a thousand PPE masks donated, which was really exciting and generous. And so for anyone who'd like to contribute, they can go to surgeonsofhope.org slash donate um, and make a contribution there and we would be so grateful. Well, thank you so much, Victoria. And this concludes today's session of Successful Philanthropy. I'm Jean Schafferoff, your host. I'll see you next week. Es bien interactivo. Y a los dos meses de haber nacido, veo que mi hijo está cansadito. Tenía problemas en su corazoncito. When we started the, the missions, maybe more than 10 years, there was a real difference with love. Un buen compañero. I remember my first mission, when we arrived, there was only one ventilator available. They had to call in other hospitals of the country to, to get one more. Entonces son casos bien complejos que a nosotros nos cuesta el manejo. Y con la ayuda de ella se nos hace, se nos facilita el trabajo. Porque la verdad que la experiencia de ella es grande y nos enseñan bastante. And uh, I do this because uh, because of a very simple principle. You know, you've got two words. One rich world in which we are, and we've got the same amount or percentage of um, children with uh, heart problems that could be cured. And on the other hand, poorer countries or very poor countries where the people die instead of being treated. These cardiac uh, problems in children, malformations, can be totally cured, giving a normal life to a child. So it's worthwhile uh, to spend some money and energy to uh, give life to people. No, no lo imagino que que va a ser un niño como todo, un niño que va a jugar, va a correr, 